uh, during the recording, that would be great. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm really excited to share with you things to do with augmented reality, the simulations that are available, and particularly with using the Merge Queue. My name is Sue Carter, and I'm the Northern Territory-based Digital Technologies Project Officer as part of the CESA program. That's the Computer Science Education and Research Group out of the University of Adelaide. Uh, with me today is Celia Koffer, who is the Victorian Project Officer, and Celia will be monitoring our chat and looking out for questions or any difficulties people might be having and help them along the way. So let's get started. I'm coming to you today from Darwin, and this is the land of the Larrakia people. So I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. I pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. For those of you that haven't used Zoom before, I'll just give you a quick overview of the tools. Uh, on the left hand side, you'll see that there's a microphone and I'll ask people if you could keep your microphone muted today. Um, if you would like to ask some questions towards the end, uh, you're welcome to turn your microphone on then. And uh, meanwhile, you can always ask questions in the chat. Um, we've asked that people keep their video cameras off as well. And there will be a, an opportunity for you to do some interaction further on through the session. So I'll go over the outline of what our session will be today and I'll do my best to keep to time. We're gonna begin with a very brief explanation of augmented reality. We'll then go on to look at how this connects with our Australian curriculum. I'll then delve into what a merge cube is and how a merge cube can be used, particularly in relation to the apps that are available. And then we'll go through uh, looking at a few things that teachers are doing using merge cubes in their classroom. I'll even uh, hopefully save some time for you to do some activities when it's your turn and tell you about the exciting new merge cube kits that are available across the country. And then we'll look into how students can build their own augmented reality experiences. So, as this is a webinar across our whole country, it would be great if people could indicate where they're from today. And the way we're going to do that is on the toolbar. You'll see there's a toolbar. Uh, it might be at the top of your screen if you scroll over and you should see the option that says annotate. If you click on annotate, up will come another bar which will then show you the ability to use the stamp tool. And I'd like it if you could stamp where you're coming from, but take note that when you have done your stamp, you might like to click the mouse button so that you don't keep on stamping in case you click on the screen. So um, we have one person from Victoria and we have someone from Adelaide. And I'll give people a few moments. I can see a drawing there in Tasmania. Um, and another tick next to Adelaide. And as people start marking their map of Australia, I might be challenged on where they're coming from in their exact town. Um, I can see we have someone else from New South Wales. And it looks like we've got a couple of people from up north in the Northern Territory as well. I'm sure there's a few ACT people and I can see a star that's been added to that area. I wonder if there's anyone from Western Australia or from Queensland. Oh, I think someone has just arrived from, Queen, uh, from Western Australia. Hi. Hello D. we're just marking on the map of Australia where we're from and I'm assuming that you're coming from Perth today. 
if you'd like to use the annotate tool in Zoom and stamp where you're from. I wonder if those two hearts off the coast are from one of the islands. Right, Celia, if you wouldn't mind taking a snapshot of that, please. Yep, all done. Great, and then if you can clear it, we'll move on. Just move on. Okay, I've forgotten how to clear it now. There we go, clear. Right, moving on. There we go. So as I said, uh, I'm part of the CESA program from the University of Adelaide. We're funded by the Australian Government Department of Education. And um, we've been operating now for four years uh, as project officers around the country bringing to you all things digital technologies. You'll see on our caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au page that we have some massive open online courses available to teachers around the country. And I'll look at some of those MOOCs a little bit later on in our session. We also have a national lending library and a range of professional learning resources available. We would love it if you could subscribe to our newsletter by going onto our web page and popping in your details. And you can always follow us on Twitter as well. So let's get into today's session. What is augmented reality? Basically, it's a process where by using our technology, we can superimpose some information into our real world environment. And then when that's viewed through a device, which has a camera, we can then see this information. So it's kind of like a digital layer of content that's being placed into this physical environment. It's not really there, it's an illusion, it's something that you can see through the camera of your device. So one of the most notable augmented reality uh, games out there is Pokemon Go. So many people uh, may know of a couple of years ago, there was quite a range of people running around trying to catch Pokemons. And that's one of the first well-known augmented reality experiences. Now, what it needs is a type of a trigger to make it happen. So triggers like QR codes you might have seen, or maybe a surface, the ability to track some sort of surface and scan the area for digital content, which is how it worked for Pokemon Go. What I've noticed recently is it is used extensively in the real, uh, real estate and marketing sectors. Um, if you have a look online, you might see different pieces of furniture in houses or around gardens where people are making it look like their augmented reality. So how does that fit in with our Australian curriculum? We have a learning area called technologies and within that is the subject of digital technologies and we also have our ICT capabilities. With our digital technologies we're looking at creating solutions for things. We're looking at our design as well as our digital solutions and so all part of that is how we're thinking, our design, our systems and our computational thinking. <clears throat> With augmented reality Digital systems are one of the foremost things that we're looking at. So you can see on the screen where I've picked out three of the content descriptions, one for each of the primary areas. Um, sorry, I didn't put the secondary ones there. Um, and so participating in augmented reality activities, you're actually addressing some of these digital system content descriptors. And you're also looking at collecting, managing and analysing data as well. Along with your ICT capability, 
which is mainly around the managing and operational side of ICT. Our students are collecting and using different types of hardware and software. Our students are understanding how systems work, and it's really important that they understand through augmented reality how this is happening through the device and through the camera that's being used, uh, and as well as managing the digital data that they're working with. So let's take a look at this Emerge Cube. I have one in my hand here um, <clears throat> with me today. So basically Emerge Cube is a sponge. You might have seen those sponges that students use sometimes to help them calm themselves down. Really, it's a black, dense foam cube, a spongy one. And I measured mine today to discover it was seven by seven by seven. So there's a bit of mathematics that you might be able to do with your students. If you have a look around the merge cube, there are some silver markings. They're often referred to as glyphs, kind of like hieroglyphics, on all six sides. Now the patterns are similar to QR codes, but each side of the merge cube actually has a different pattern or silver marking on it. Now these patterns are the triggers that launch the augmented reality experience. But you need to do this through the merge cube app. So the app is launched on the device and through pointing the camera at this Merge Cube, this digital layer of content will then lay over it and something will come alive three-dimensionally. So here is an example for you to see of a student holding a Merge Cube. Now she can't see it, but what you're seeing is what it would look like through the lens of the device that's being used. Now these are available for purchase in Australia. They're around $20 to $30 each. Um, if you're buying packs, they can be cheaper. Uh, and they arrived in Australia around about 12 months ago. There are lots of different simulations that you can see uh, through using your Merge Cube. However, not everybody is able to get hold of a Merge Cube. Oh, sorry. Um, there are also some accessories go with the Merge Cube. And um, I urge you to be very careful in this space. Uh, there's a Merge Cube headset that can be purchased. Now this provides your VR experience, your virtual reality, where the student's putting it onto their head and then not only just seeing the augmented, but being part of that virtual reality. However, this requires a mobile device. And I do know of some schools that have gone out and purchased these, not realising it needs a mobile device as well, which there's an additional cost, of course. These headsets cost around about $75 each, but they're not necessary for you to have the augmented reality experience. The Merge Cube is really all you need. However, not everybody can get access to a Merge Cube. So Merge have now created a paper net for the cube. So if you go to mergecube.com slash paper and make sure you put the dash PDF, you'll be able to print out your own, which is a fabulous activity to do with the students and then they might be able to take one home themselves. And you can overlay this onto cardboard or card and then they can have a more stable construction than just with paper. But it gets better because you can actually make a large merge cube. And I've worked with a teacher who did a really large one, put it in the middle of the room. The students then had iPads, the app was on the iPad and the students could actually walk around the room and have the experience of the three dimensional object there and they could see it from all different sides. So I'm gonna show you this short video of how you can make a giant merge cube. Merge Cube, you can find one of the sides. There's a link there. 
let's dive into the apps. Uh, Merge Cube have recently released two new apps, Merge Explorer and Object Viewer. I often get these two mixed up and I have to keep remembering the Explorer is the one with the binoculars, like students are going out exploring. Whereas the viewer is actually looking at something and therefore you need the glasses to look at it. These are now available both in the App Store, on Google Play and on the Microsoft Store and they work on Windows 10. I put there the versions that are currently available and last month version 1.3.7 of the Explorer app was released on the App Store. However, version 1.3.5 is on the Google Play Store, so it's not actually the latest one. And Windows didn't tell me what the version was, but I know it was quite old. So by using these on iPads or on mobile devices through the App Store, um, you're going to get the most uh, latest version. The same with the Object Viewer. Uh, last month, about three weeks ago actually, they released the new Object Viewer. So I would recommend that if you have a mobile device with you right now, you might like to go to one of the stores and download it as I work through some of these slides and in preparation for the activity to come. Now, it's really important as you're getting started that you're aware of how you can get into the app. It can be tricky. When you first launch the Explorer app, you're met with a screen which shows you five, uh, sorry, one, two, three, yep, five phones, and this large pink button that says start your free trial. If you click that pink button, you can start a seven day free trial. But that then takes you on to your $16.49 per month US dollars, which will be taken out of your account each month, should you choose to uh, purchase it. However, if you look right down the bottom in very small grey writing, you can see the word skip. And if you click on skip, that takes you to the, uh, all the topic cards that are available for free. So on the right, um, I've got an example there of what terraforming Earth looks like, where a student is able to experience what a volcano looks like, both from the outside and the inside with a whole lot of information around how volcanoes work. Now there are, at this point in time, there are nine free topic cards within the Merge Explorer app. I've only shown you eight here, and they range with activities from the kindies right through to year eight. Each one of these on the screen are science simulations. And there are a range of topic cards with information, with questions and with quizzes. And the quizzes are divided up into those grade levels as well. And each one of those gives you a augmented reality experience where the student can actually hold the cube in their hand, hold the device and actually see something come to life. Mr. Body and Galactic Explorer used to be free apps available separately but now these have all been pulled into the Merge Explorer app. So how does it work? It's really important for our students to understand that this isn't magic that's happening. Um, it's actually the digital systems working together. So through the app, using a device and the camera, pointing it at the Merge cube, they'll be able to see an experience similar to what you see there which is about the tectonic plates and how parts of the earth are moving, causing volcanoes and earthquakes and those sorts of things. What it does do is put it in the palm of the hand of the student so they can actually see it happening uh, close up. Now with our COVID lockdowns around the world, what Merge have done is they've opened up some what they call remote learning opportunities. So they've set up a Wakelet site. And on the site, you can get access to these eight topic cards with some video of how they work. And then there are some lesson plans that are available, again, broken up into those grade levels for you to use with your students. 
the idea was that students would be able to do these things at home, having a printable merge cube, and then uh, having these activities and trying these different things and getting to start to under understand some of our science concepts. I've had a look at our Australian curriculum website and if you go into the science area, most of these things actually match beautifully with our year five, our year six, our year seven and our year eight science concepts and understandings. Now, if you are very passionate about Merge Cubes and the whole Merge experience with augmented reality, Merge have now built an education dashboard. If you pay for the premium version of this, you'll be able to enter classes, enter other teachers, enter students, and enter a whole lot of resources that are available. And then you're able to monitor what the students are seeing, what they're doing, their progress along the way, uh, and you can also do some assessment. However, if you just want to try it out first and see what it's like, there is the dashboard that doesn't require a, um, a cost at all. It is free. And I'm hoping it will come up on my screen, but it doesn't seem to want to. It's not there. All right. So... That's the Explorer app and you can launch the Explorer from a computer as well and you can browse the topics. Now let's move on to the Object Viewer app. This is the one where you can start to see, thinking of seeing these 3D virtual manipulatives. It's like a, um, an animated library. There's a lot of things in there some things are free, some things are not, but there is so much to choose from as your starting point when you're using and visually engaging your students in the tools that are available. What you can also do is upload, view and share 3D objects. Students can create their own collections and with the free part of Object Viewer, they can actually upload five images. There are over a thousand objects that can be placed into your library. And again, you're viewing using the Merge Cube and you're placing something like it's in the real world. Each object also has some details about it. So if you go into it, now this is what it looked like uh, three weeks ago and then it's recently changed. What you do is you select an object from the library or you can upload your own object from a um, 3D area and then you can view it, you can stamp it. And what's really clever about this, which is what we're going to practice very shortly, is that you've got it on the Merge Cube, you click on the stamp, you move the merge cube away and that item actually stays in the room where you are. So a lovely idea here is creating your own museum collection. Object Viewer also has a dashboard where you can upload or download many different objects. Here's an example of a seahorse. And when you click on the seahorse word, up comes the details of the object. Now these details are from Wikipedia and it gives you some information about that particular item that you're looking at. You can also click on the heart and then it will transfer over to your favorites. So at any time you wanna look at your favorites, when you click on my favorites, all the things that uh, you've stamped are available. So what can you do with your students when it comes to using the viewer? Well, one idea is to create your own museum. And I'm going to show you a short video here of some students in a middle school, years seven and eight, and they were working with their local museum. They were given 115 artifacts that were hidden away, weren't out on display. And these students were able to use a number of different apps and create their own virtual museum of these items.
we wanted to answer a problem for, for the fort. And their biggest thing is as a museum, they only have about 2% of the artifacts on display. Um, that's, that's the most like usually any museum really does. And so they wanted to showcase other artifacts, but didn't have the means to do it. And that's where um, I came in. And so our idea was to create this digital virtual museum. They gave us over 100, about 120 uh, different artifacts that were over 160 to 190 years old. Um, we taught our students, our middle school students, our seventh and eighth graders. Like, people were like, seventh and eighth graders can handle that? Yes, they can. Each student got their own artifact that they created a 3D scan of using the uh, iPad app clone, which does uh, photogrammetry for us on a rather easier scale. It really um, democratizes making uh, 3D scanning available to everyone. But our students then analyzed those artifacts and were able to create this digital museum that we then um, hosted on Sketchfab. Um, and then we um, used awesome tables to actually create a, our own metadata and have our own searchable uh, museum on our website, uh, itechfever.org. But the great thing is with Merge Cube, now those objects are also, you can hold them in your hand. We are now able to upload that artifact to the uh, object uploader, and you can now hold that artifact in the palm of your hand. And so something that is extremely delicate and needs to be kept in temperature, temperature controlled areas, you can now hold in your hand and look at the differences and, and look at that object um, as it would be on display at a museum. If you're interested in uh, seeing any more about the museum, the link is there, uh, sites.google.com. And if you want to have a look at that full video, uh, it's also there on YouTube. Now, another way that object viewer is being used is in the art world. So here are some examples of a sculpture exhibit that was being created. What they were doing was testing different ideas that if they were building these sculptures, how would they look? And this is kind of the way that real estate agents are starting to use augmented reality now by putting furniture into an empty house so that when you look at it, it actually looks like it's really there. Now, there are a couple more apps that are available to look at. Uh, one of the first ones that actually came out is Dig. And Dig is kind of similar to Minecraft, where students are using different types of resources like stone or sand or grass or brick and lava. And what they can do is they can build onto the cube. Um, so in some cases they've built forests, in others they've done works of art, others have done buildings and houses and castles and those sorts of things. Or what you can do is actually mine into it. And as you dig into the space, you will expose different types of resources. Another one that's available is Thing. Now Thing kind of has more mini games and it's a place that developers can go and start to flag, hey, how would this look as an app? So this is also a, a fun place for students to explore. Now, let's have a look at how DIG is being used. Um, I'm gonna show you Gabe Haydu. He is a teacher at a Singaporean school. And what he's done is developed using DIG to do some mathematical concepts around geometry, around surface area, around perimeter, finding out the volume of shapes. Hi, I'm Gabe Haydu and I teach at Singapore American School. I'm currently teaching fifth grade there, but I'm a huge techie and uh, I've been incorporating augmented reality and virtual reality into my class uh, I'd say for the past three years or so, especially augmented reality. Um, and I've found that it really, really brings things into reality for the students. You know, you're able to take regular 2D content and make it come to life. Uh, and I think that's really cool. So as soon as I got my hands on Emerge Cube, I was trying to figure out how can I incorporate this into my lessons? How can I incorporate it in an authentic way, not just for fun? 
And uh, so the, the first thing that came to my mind was math because I'm just kind of a math-minded person anyway. We're using the app Dig to calculate the volume of composite shapes. So you can see students working hard, totally engaged, collaborating, building their own cities all on the merge cube and then calculating the volumes. It's great. What are you guys working on? Oh, we're using a merge cube to find the volume of a composite shape. Cool. Whoa, what do you got going on over here? So, I'm um, using merge cube to create um, a house for a volume fill. Awesome. How does this help you calculate the volume easier? Uh, because it has 3D objects, so um, we can like picture what it looks like. One of the best parts about this turned out to be the whole function of screen recording. And so I ended up using the screen record feature built into the app, and the kids were able to kind of build, or if they had already built, they can explain what they've built, and they can explain the dimensions and the volume, and um, kind of what goes into the whole idea of, of these concepts. And so then it's really easy for them to take that video file, it saves directly to the camera roll, and they can post it to their Seesaw or to Flipgrid and um, kind of build that ecosystem of student voice and student work. So that turned out to be great. And it's easy as a teacher, like how easy is it to go through and look at, you know, 22 10 second clips of a kid explaining their work, um, which turned out to be great. And here's another um, idea about using the app Things uh, for teaching English. So this particular teacher was teaching English uh, to second language learner and um, built some posters around vocabulary and then asked a whole lot of questions around how uh, or what sort of things that they saw and helped them to understand uh, their learning English. And it doesn't look like that is going to play. Oh, here we go. Now there's no sound to this one, but what happens is on each side of the merge cube, there are four different very small features. As you click on one, it will then take over the cube. So you could see before there was a campfire, or there's a picture of a heart, or there's a piece of watermelon that slices. So there's a number of different options there for the students to start to experience. I thought it was interesting how this particular teacher used it as teaching for English. Now, uh, with us today, we also have one of our project officers from Sydney. Her name is Helen, and Helen works at the Presbyterian Ladies College in Sydney, and Helen's been doing some things with her students. So, Helen, if you would like to turn your webcam on and share with us how you're using Merge with your students. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, Sue. Um, the, the examples you shared are amazing and the things I've done are nowhere near as amazing in that. But we've had um, the opportunity to have merge cubes at the school for a, a year or so now. And in that time, I've used them um, across K to six. So my role at the school is as a digital technologies and ICT integrator. And in that role, I teach technology and I try and align it to curriculum other curriculum areas, but mostly science. So the way that we that I've used Merge Cube has been to explore concepts in our science program. Um, I can I share my screen? I'll just I've got a couple of photos. Yep. No. Oh, sorry. You might need. Yeah. Thanks. I'm thanks. stop sharing. Yeah. It's just easier to talk to photos. Um. So can you see that presentation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've just got um, three examples of um, how I've used Merge. So in stage three, um, our students were exploring a unit around natural disasters and we're looking at things like, um, you know, different types of natural disasters and where they occur in the world. So we used the Merge cubes and we used the predicting catastrophe card, which is located in the app. Um, and then in that card, you can see the students are able to explore different types of natural disasters, um, 
be able to identify where on the world they tend to occur. So looking at things like tornadoes and where in, particularly on the earth they occur, or in this case we were looking at drought. And when you click into the activity, it gives some really nice examples of um, how that occurs, why those particular natural disasters are um, occur in that particular region of the world. So um, this activity really just um, was a way of cementing their understanding of the concepts that they were exploring within the science um, learning um, of the natural disasters. With stage two, we do a unit on data and as part of that unit, we explore um, different types of um, code and um, data systems. So one of the things that we do is we look at Morse code. Um, so when I'm introducing Morse code to the students, we use again that predicting catastrophe card and within that card, there's a Morse code activity. So you can see this is what the simulation looks like and the students are able to then use that um, kind of virtual telegraph and have a go at, at making some Morse code letters and it's got the alphabet there. So um, it's easier for them to you know, be able to convert um, to that kind of coding um, language. And then the last example I, I, I've done with stage one, um, they, we have a unit um, which is all around sound and um, exploring different types of sound, um, you know, in the world and in particularly in film and, um, and theatre. Um, and we do some work with a Foley artist um, in that. So one of the things that um, we did um, when learning about sound and particularly learning about the representation of sound through sound waves was use the We're Making Waves app. Uh, so we're making waves card in the app and then in that card you can see it brings up like a sound wave um, and then the students can use the toggles at the bottom to modify the, the wavelength or the frequency and it, it gives them a representation of the actual sound that it makes and then what the sound looks like in terms of the sound wave. So um, again a lot of these activities just kind of um, support what they're already doing as part of their learning um, in science. The most recent thing that we've done is actually tapping into what you mentioned earlier, um, Sue, about the giant merge cube. So um, the girls were in stage three, were looking at um, different types of 3D objects as part of maths. So I charged a group of girls with a task of creating, I might have to turn my virtual screen off so you can see, but I said to them, Mrs. K wants a um, giant merge cube. <laughs> can you create a giant cube? And so they did. And so they actually built me a cube and then we printed out the merge, uh, the, the giant merge um, printable and then created a giant merge cube, which they were most excited and um, proud about. So that's our, been our most recent um, merge. Activity. That's awesome, Helen. Um, they absolutely loved doing that too. <laughs> they were very proud. <laughs> And I, I think I really like the fact that you are using this. These are real examples in our Australian schools um, yeah. on how this can be done. And, and it's quite it's, easy to do. I mean, the little, the stage one students, so they were year one, um, they were fine, um, you know, and it was a good way of exploring some of those ICT capabilities as well. Of how do we hold our iPad? How do we use the camera? And so forth. So, thank Fantastic. You. Thank you. I'm just going to go back to yep. share. Oh sharing my screen again. And we'll move on then to the next part, which is activity time. So we've got 20 minutes left of our session this afternoon, and I'd like to spend the next five to 10 minutes um, with people exploring and having a try. Um, I did ask people earlier to download the object viewer, and if you want to, the Merge Explorer app. And uh, now this is your opportunity to have a bit of a try. So on the screen, you can see the top of a Merge Cube. That's the trigger for the augmented reality to happen. Um, so what you need to do is launch the app on your device. Then you select one of the collections that appears on the screen. The example I've given you there is from the cells section. So I chose the cells. And then I decided I want to look inside a plant cell. Once you choose that particular object, you need to wait for it to download. Now I discovered that it takes around about 15 seconds 
for the actual app to open and then sometimes another 15 to 20 seconds for the actual image to download. I think that's very dependent on the uh, internet speed that you have. It will be interesting to see how that might work in schools that have a smaller chunk of internet. Then what you can do is um, pinch to make it look smaller on your screen or drag it apart to make it look larger. If you twist it around, you'll be able to see different angles of the actual cell. And if you notice there in the bottom right hand corner here, there's a little stamp tool. And if you click on that, what will happen is you will stamp that object into virtual space and then when you move the trigger away, that will actually stay there. So you can see in the bottom picture there how my plant cell is sitting in space. And I think my dog managed to get in the background there as well. And then I can actually have a look at inside the cell. And again, by using the moving, the pinching, the twisting, pulling it apart and together, you can actually change the shape and the size. Now, you heard Gabe earlier talking about the video or, or the camera use. So when you have this in the virtual space, you can always take a photograph of it or a video of moving it around as well. So I'm going to give people uh, a chance to have a bit of a play with that right now. We'll spend a couple of minutes uh, on doing that and then I'll launch into the lending library and what's available. I'm going to leave this screen on so that you have the trigger to be able to uh, trigger off some augmented reality for those people who don't have a merge cube, a printable cube with them today. Sue, Michelle's already said, um, this is great, would be cool to connect the device to a projector so the class can see. Now that is a great idea. I wonder if Helen, if you've tried that. Sorry, Sue, what was that? I just stepped away for a moment. You, I started had, <laughs> yep, um, I think it was uh, one, of the, one of our participants has suggested that maybe if we connect this up to a projector, then that would enable everybody to see what's happening as well with the augmented reality. Have you tried doing that? Through Zoom? No, not with Zoom, just in the classroom. No, um, oh, I've got a, a, a kind of a whiteboard connector that connects my iPad to my board. So I've, when I've taught it to students, I've done it that way. So it's yes, cool. I have projected up onto yep. the whiteboard. You can, um, you can mirror your screen using different apps. So we've got a BenQ app. I know any kind of Apple device has that Apple screen mirror mirroring, so that can work. Yeah, mirroring using Apple TV and things like that can work as well. Um, so if you have that capability, then yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Or having a giant merge cube is also effective because you can put that in the middle and then the kids can all um, point their devices to, to it. But for demonstration purposes, yes. Excellent. Celia, are there any more comments or questions yep. while people yep. are playing? So Dee has suggested that she uses the Air server to show the merge cube in action on the, on the whiteboard. And yep. Danielle says, um, using, I've mirrored the iPad to an I, Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah, they're all that mirroring, screen mirroring process. Yeah, definitely. And you can do it through Zoom. It's just a little bit trickier to do. Um, so if you're if you're having to remote teach, <laughs> it's uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't quite up to doing that today myself. It's, it's, it's <laughs> a little bit involved in that. <laughs> Celia, any questions at this point? No, there's no more comments or questions. Maybe people could tell us how they're going with their um, experiment using Object Viewer. So I would encourage people to um, maybe turn their microphones on and share with us how they're going and what, they're, what objects they might be playing with. Sadly, it won't um, open on my phone. My phone's not, not supported. Okay, now that is a beautiful comment. Uh, if you go into the different areas where you download the app, 
They talk about what is available in terms of system requirements. And it's really important to understand uh, the, the um, operating system that you're working on. So it has to be a version Windows 10 on a Windows device. Um, if you have an Android or if you're using an Apple device, again, you need uh, specific iOS, I can't remember if it was 11, um, 11. Or 13. I think it's 11 required. Um, and also the type of device, whether you're using a mini iPad or what generation of iPad you're using, those all affect whether or not you can use it. So if you're going to go down this line of using Merge Cubes, it's really important to know what the system requirements are to make sure that they're going to work. Uh, another thing that I've discovered is sometimes the app crashes. The earlier versions of the apps were crashing a lot for me. These latest ones that I've downloaded from the App Store have actually been working really well. Um, but they do have a tendency, depending on which version you're using, that you do have to close it and open it again. Another thing I have noticed is that if I leave it open on my iPad, uh, it tends to drain the battery of my device quickly as well. This is Joy here. I'm Hello, using Joy. an Android um, phone. I can get the, I'm doing a butterfly. I can get the butterfly beautifully, but I can't manipulate it. So I agree with what you said. My phone's not quite good enough to do the other stuff. Yeah. And that is one of the difficulties that we have with technology that as these wonderful new things come out for us to use with our students, sometimes the technology that we have that we're trying to use, the devices aren't quite up to speed to what's required. And I've had that, that experience recently uh, using some robotics and buying the kits and taking them out there to schools to find out that they're just not working on our system or they're not working with the devices that the schools have. Thanks for sharing that, Joy. Sue, there's a comment from Jan. Just suggest as well, a lot of schools have Chromebooks and we, we have Chromebooks and some iPads and we initially downloaded the Merge app on the Chromebook. Um, and while it works on the Chromebook, it, it doesn't give you the same sort of functionality as the iPad, so you can't stamp and things like that. So that's just something to be mindful of if you are at a Chromebook school. Um, you can still use the app. It just, it, it would probably be a lot more limited than what the experience that you would get on, an, on a tablet type device. Okay, that's really good to know. Um... All my experimentation has been with an iPad and with a phone, and I haven't used anything in the Android world and only recently downloaded onto a Windows 10 machine to see that it's a much older version as well. Um, was there someone else out there, Celia, that had a yes. question? Yeah, uh, well, Jan said, this is great. I'm projecting some artwork onto my dining table. Um, it's quite mind-blowing that this one image face of the Merge Cube can interpret and display many different images. Why is this so? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So Maybe if you could take a photo of it and send it to me, I might be able to answer that question. Someone that Michelle has mentioned, I think that they root the, uh, the QR code on the Merge Cube to a specific image depending on the activity. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> Good point. Um, look, look at the time. It's probably time we moved on. Yes, I'm, I'm going to move on now. We've got 10 minutes and I need to tell people about this exciting new kit that's available. Um, the Caesar um, program has just launched Merge Cube kits as part of the National Lending Library. We have eight kits that we can send out across Australia, one to each jurisdiction. Inside the kit, there are eight of these foam merge cubes and along with four iPads and then the lesson plan exemplars for years five, six, but also there's some for seven and eight uh, and they are being added uh, regularly. Each of these particular lesson plans at the moment are around the using uh, the simulations 
but the next set are about, so how do I build my own augmented reality for a purpose? So you'll find those lesson plans at the CESAR MOOCs website um, for the National Lending Library area. Now, talking about building your own augmented reality, um, there wasn't time in our session today to build that in. So there'll be a second session, part two, of making your own using co-spaces, doing things in Tinkercad and having a look at Sketchfab where you can build and download your own 3D content. So that session will be in October, around about mid-October. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Now, in relation to all the resources that I've used and shared with you today, I would like to acknowledge that Jamie Donnelly um, is one of the most well-renowned people working in the merge area and augmented reality. And she has some lesson plans um, that she's put together and she has a site called arvrinedu.com where there's lots of information that you can follow up on augmented reality with the Merge Cube. Merge also have, as I mentioned earlier, their remote teaching packages um, that are developed in a wakelet and also ideas on how you can use Merge in your school. So when people get access to this uh, presentation, then you'll be able to click on the links for those. Merge also have a set of lesson plans and I found some lesson plans on the Modern Teaching Aid site as well, all related to the Merge. And then uh, Mazzaro's memo is another good place to have a look at how he's used different apps in different ways with the Merge Cube. If you're interested in exploring this fur further, Jamie Donnelly put a book out in 2018 about learning transported all around augmented virtual and mixed reality for the classroom. Um, so that is available on Kindle or you can, I'm pretty sure, purchase the soft covered book as well for around $30 on Amazon. And then um, at Teachers Pay Teachers, there are a range of activities there. I've taken a screenshot of seven of them put together in a bundle of different ways that you can use the Merge Cube. So I just want to remind people that um, part of the CESAR program, we have these massive open online courses, we call them MOOCs. These are self-paced courses and we have the foundations and the extended for the F to six area. Uh, and then we have the years seven and eight and nine and 10, where you can learn more all around the digital technologies learning area. Recently, we launched the Teaching AI in the Classroom. And if you want to learn more about augmented reality, um, I suggest that you register for that one. And just this year, we've launched our cybersecurity and awareness for both primary and secondary school teachers. So I encourage people to go to the cesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au website and find out more. Thank you everyone for participating today and I hope you were able to learn something more about the Merge Cube and what it means in terms of augmented reality. We would love some feedback on our session today. So if you're able to type into a uh, internet browser window, the bit.ly of Caesar-webinar-feedback, um, that would be most welcome. And Celia, if you can put that into the chat, that would be great. If you'd like to keep in touch with us, um, you can always follow us on Facebook uh, or on Twitter, the hashtag Caesar Mooks. And don't forget, we also have a YouTube channel where this recording will be in a couple of weeks time. So thanks Celia, if you can turn the recording off now. And I'll just let people know that uh, today was the first in a series of webinars being delivered.